The second question is about the nature of women in the church, right. workforce, and in sports today. Since the feminist movement arrived in this, on the scene in the 1970s, can you explain the negative and positive effects on what the feminist movement did for women and what, the, what God's word has to say about the movement of women today? The feminist movement had positive effects and negative effects. Mm -hmm. The positive effects, it did encourage women to stand on their own two feet. Right and encourage, it, it, it helps fight for women equal pay. That's right. Because the job market is unfair yeah. when it comes to women. Yeah. Hey, if a woman is a foreman on a construction site and a man is a foreman on a construction site, she should be paid the same thing. That's right. In fact, if her performance is better than the man, pay her more. That's right. So the feminist movement uh, had very good positive effects encouraging women to stand for their God-given rights. Mm -hmm. Stand for their rights. I encourage any and every woman to stand for whatever right that God gave you. That's right. Why, certainly. Amen. If a woman is being beat up by her husband, she mm -hmm. ought to stand against it. That's Amen. Right. If a woman is being raped by a man, mm -hmm. she ought to stand against it. That's right. If a woman is being used and abused and being threatened on a job to have sex with the boss Amen. to keep the job, stand against it. That's right. So the feminist movement encouraged women to step up to the plate in the job market made them see you ain't just got to settle for being a maid that's right and a house cleaner that's right you can be a doctor mm -hmm. you can be a lawyer a lawyer you can be a judge that's right you can be a president that's right don't say a woman can be a president why well, certainly certainly sheba was a queen which that's is true. simply a head politician of a kingdom that's right certainly certainly so yes, now the downside that the feminist organization or the movement had, what it done to some women was made some think they was head of the man because of their position. Right. And made some, because of their position, become arrogant, yes, mm -hmm. self-righteous. Yeah. And rule out God and their biblical role. That's right. The book says the head of every woman is the man. Mm. That don't mean the woman is lesser no, than a human being. No. no. Doesn't mean that at all. No, no. If a woman work, mm. get paid. That's right. You understand? That's right. If whatever job she has, because even today we are in the 21st century. You can check across the board. A lot of positions that women hold on the job market, men hold the exact same position, and you can see a difference in pay as day and night. Amen. A man can be a secretary mm. and may make 5,000 more a year. That's true. And she's doing the exact same work, if not more. That's right. So the feminist organization had some very good positive effects and benefits. Mm -hmm. The feminist organization, when they start organizing and whatnot, in fact, it was really before the 1970s. They was marching the streets in the 1920s. Yeah. Encouraging one another to vote. And in fact, it was the women that was pushing the government to ban alcohol. That's right. Oh, yeah, it was the women that was coming together in America. When prohibition came mm -hmm. and alcohol was banned out the country, it was the women of America that started petitioning the politicians of that time. Right. They get rid of liquor mm -hmm. because many women were getting tired of their husbands coming home from the bar and being nothing more than a punching bag from a sloppy mouth drunk. Amen. During the 1920s, right. And even at the, before then, the women around America merged. Yeah. You can see old documented footage with their long dresses on and their hats. That's true. Big banners marching the streets of America. That's right. To ban liquor. That's right. 
They got tired of getting beat up yeah. by crazy husbands. Amen. Who's drunk. Mm -hmm. And some still getting beat up by husbands who's emotionally and mentally drunk. That's right. So yes, the movement had very good positive effects. It even encouraged women to vote. Mm -hmm. It showed them that they have voting power. That's true. So certainly, a lot of men think that a woman don't have no rights. No rights. No rights. The only thing she's good for is to lay down and have her, egg, her legs up towards heaven. That's right. That's right. Kitchen and bed, bed and kitchen. That's right. You know, like like you open up a little, a little breakfast place, bed and kitchen. <laughs> That's what they look at. That's right. Hey man, what's your wife's name? Bed and kitchen. <laughs> Amen. If a man don't love his wife, mm -hmm. then why expect for him to treat you right? That's true. It's common sense justice. That's right. If a woman, if a woman don't love her husband. Well, at least tell him. That's right. Don't lead him on. That's right. I'm not in love with you. That's it. Mm -hmm. If you don't love your wife, tell her. Tell her. Only keep it real. I'm, I'm not, if she asks you, do you love me? Don't lie. That's right. <laughs> because if you say yes and you know you don't, you're a liar. Amen. That's the truth of it. That's right. Don't tell a person what they want to hear. That's right. Do you love me? Are you in love with me? Tell them straight up. No. No, oh, Pastor Jennings, whoo, that's harsh. That's real. Amen. A man asks, if he don't want to know, he should shut up and don't ask. <laughs> that's right. And once you ask, you should tell you, take it like a man. Like a man. That's it. That's you ask him, and he tell you, no. Don't set yourself up to expect yes. You ask, be prepared for what come. That's right. Are you in love with me? You know whether you're in love with him or not? Yeah. Tell the truth. That's right. Hmm? You can't love her, then smack her on the floor. No. No. You can't love your wife, then steal from her. That's right. The feminist organization or movement encourage women to have their own bank accounts, which is nothing wrong with that. Mm hmm if a woman work, why she got to come home and give her check to her husband? Amen. It don't make sense for a woman to work, come home, give her check to her husband, mm -hmm. and then the husband take out a percentage of the check to give her an allowance from her own money? <laughs> That's right. Use a dictating fool. That's a fool. Amen. That's if, right. if, if my wife work, I don't want her money. Mm -hmm. I'm old school. I, I, I believe that. I don't, if my wife was working, I don't want her money. Mm -hmm. I work, my money is her money. That's right. And, just a minute. <laughs> I want everybody to get this. Amen. I work and take care of my wife and children. My money is her money. Now, if she got a job, her money is not my money. That's right. My money is my money, and her money is her money. Right. My money is my money, my money is her money, and her money is her money. That's my right. money, it belongs to her, and her money belongs to her. Her money don't belong to me. That's right. Nope. That's right. Her money do not belong to me, because God tell the man, you work. You work. That's right. By the sweat. Your brow. Your brow. That's right. I ain't taking my wife money. Amen. I ain't got to pay her, give her allowance of her own hard work money. If I work, my money is mine and hers. If she work, her money is just hers. That's right. I ain't taking her money. You're teaching me. If she's a good woman and there's something that needs to be done in the house, and if I'm where I can't do it, she has to step up the plate. But. Just a minute. <laughs> but I ain't looking for her to carry the load. 
That's right. And look at how to carry the load. That's right. God command the man. The man to work. Work by the sweat of his brow. His brow. My money belong to her. Mm -hmm. Her money do not belong to me. That's right. Go ahead. God command the man Go ahead. to work by the sweat of his brow. That's right. If you can't do the job, don't fill out the application and propose to no woman. Amen. I don't want my wife money. Mm -mm. I don't even want her to give me money to put gas in my car. Amen. If I can't drive my own gas or drive my own car and put gas in it, it's going to be parked. To me to be an insult. My wife got to pay the mortgage. My wife got to pay the rent. My wife got to pay the electric. My wife got to pay the gas. And she's out of work and carrying me. Then she come home tired. That's right. And I'm going to complain if she ain't giving it up. She tired. Go ahead, brother. Good teacher. A good woman is hard to come by. Hard to find. Go ahead, brother. We have a tendency of reading the Bible so much we become male chauvinistic. That's right. The word of God is not designed to make you male chauvinistic. No. The word of God is designed to make you humble. That's right. And respect God's law. Men, so ought men to love their wives. Do you hear this? In Ephesians 5 and verse 28. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Whatever my wife, if she go to work, Whatever she make a year, I said, I ain't asking her. Amen. Oh, I ain't worried about that. If she made more money than me, fine. I ain't worried about that. Right. Why? Because a good woman know how to manage her money. That's right. An old crazy woman will spin it the moment that the check, before the, by the time that machine print the last digit. <laughs> If my wife got a bank account, I can't take it upon myself to go inside her account and take money out. If I do and she don't know it, I stole from her. That's right. And I can't hide under the scripture of one flesh. Right. I can't hide under that scripture of one flesh. Amen. I can't hide of one flesh. She's working, that's her money. She got her bank account. I can't go in there and take it. No, sir. But she can go in mine. That's right. Because my money is hers. That's right. Why? I'm commanded to work. Work. Sweat of the brow. By the sweat of the brow. So I'm saying, you preaching separate. You preaching individualism. Well, what the Bible say? You're one flesh. The Bible say you're one flesh. Yes, the Bible say you're one flesh. But do you know what it mean? Right. Do you know what that word means? That's right. Well, that means everything is hers, is mine. Then why don't you wear her girdle? Go ahead. Why don't you wear her stockings? Go ahead. That don't mean everything that's hers is yours. Because the Bible tells a woman don't wear that which pertain. Pertain. There's something that still belongs to the man. That's right. That's good. Good. Pertain. That's right. You got to rightly divide the word of truth. Yes. Hmm? It That's says right. pertain. Pertain to a man. To a man. To a man. I don't wear her heels. No. I ain't trying to wear her bra. I ain't got nothing to hold it. <laughs> nothing, nothing to hold. <laughs> Hallelujah. Nothing to hold. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Someone said, but when you get married, ain't no separation. It is and it is not. Right. God command me when I pray to him, I can't have my hair covered. She got to have hers. That's right. Separation. That's right. That's right. When a book says you're one flesh, that simply just means you're no longer two separate individuals anymore. False relationship. That's right. One flesh one is flesh. talking about you in a different relationship. That's right. That's all that is. Amen. You're married. That's why you two, when you leave the house, you go to your separate jobs. Your separate jobs. That's right. That's still married. But yet you're still married. That's right. 
Don't quote me nothing you can't interpret. <laughs> Amen. One flesh one just flesh. represent a different relationship. That's to right. prove that there's a one, here you got sin, fornication and adultery. Mm -hmm. It's committed by two different forms of relationship. That's right. Fornication by single. Right. Adultery by married. Right. Two different relationships. That's right. Huh. Can't have men trying to twist the Bible. Twist it up. To dwindle women down to nothing. Amen. Hmm? Amen. A woman can be a principal, a school teacher. She just can't be a preacher. Just can't be, that's all. All these other places in the world. Hey, she can be a chief executive, a CEO. That's right. She can fly an airplane. Many airplanes I got on. I saw the female pilot coming in. I didn't say, oh my God, that's a woman. <laughs> I ain't flying. No. I pray for her just like I pray for the man up there. That's right. I pray that God guide her. That's right. I ain't looking that she's a sinner. I'm looking that she's a pilot. <laughs> that's right. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Do you understand? That's right. We get in the Bible and read it too much. We go in there without God. Without God. And then we come out with these dumb way of thinking. And then you embarrass God and embarrass the church. That's right. Holding for something that not even God came up with. Amen. You brothers, stop stealing your wife money. That's right. That's right. The Lord said, thou shalt not steal. Not steal. That's a commandment, right? Well, that's my wife. I take her money when I get ready. God said, shalt thou not shalt steal. not steal. Thou shalt not steal. That's the way you see it. I don't see it like that. I don't see it no way but like God said. That's right. That's God right. tell the man to work, work by the sweat of his brow. That's the right. man. That's right. That's right. That's law. That's the law. Man must provide any time you go, even if a man take his wife's social security number and she don't know nothing about it and start buying things, that's identity theft. That's right. You know, all of a sudden she get all these bills and she ain't did nothing to get it. Amen. That's identity theft. It was a thief. That's a thief. That's right. And a robber. Oh, yeah. That's right. You think because you married, that means you, you can't steal? Amen. Amen. Go ahead, man. You think because you marry, you're not capable of stealing? Have you? Are you that foolish? Go ahead. Go ahead, man. I don't need to speak in tongue now. <laughs> Time to listen. That's identity theft. Go ahead, brother. You mean to tell me you're going to take your wife's social security name, her number, and then all of a sudden you're going to open up credit cards, checking accounts, and all that? All of that. And she don't know it? You stole. That's a, that's a thief. Thou shalt, shalt not, not steal. Well, her number is my number. <laughs> then why y'all got two different numbers? <laughs> All you need is, this is just common sense teaching. Common sense, that's right. If I'm going to have so much Holy Ghost and get the bucking and jerking until I ain't got good sense, stop buck dancing. Amen. Go ahead, go ahead. All that bucking and jerking and I'm a thief. It's a thief. Any of you men been stealing from your wife and you don't repent and you die without repenting, you're going to hell. That's right. You stole from her. That's right. Go ahead, man. Mm. You can't look at stealing that less because it's your wife. That's true. Someone say, well, how can I steal from my wife? That's like asking, how can you rape your wife? That's right. That's right. That's right. Go ahead, brother. Oh, well, we one flesh. That don't mean you're not capable of raping your wife. Go ahead. That don't mean you ain't capable. Well, she's supposed to give it to me every time I want it. Where is that scripture? Where is that at? That's right. Go ahead, man. Hit me. I got right to take it. You hit me. You are a rapist. That's right. That's right, sir. Our first church rapist. My Lord. For no man 
Anytime a man feels don't he got a right Go to ahead. force himself upon his woman, he don't think that woman is worth nothing. That's right. That's right. Dogs force themselves upon somebody. Amen. Anytime a man gonna force himself upon you and take what he want and walk off. Amen. He's lower than a dog. That's right. That's rape. That's right. Are you that ignorant? ignorant. To actually think because you married, That's you can't true. steal from the individual because I'm married. Yeah. That's like saying I can't hurt you. Why? We married. That's right. Oh, I can't hurt you. I did it when I was single, but because we married now, we in love. I can't hurt you. You can steal from her. You can rape her. You can do all those things. All those things. That's true. Hmm? That's right. You can slap her, kick her, beat her, all those things you all do. All of that. Are you listening? That's right. So a lot of us look at the word one flesh and stretch it out of the contents of the book. Right. <laughs> Ain't no brother supposed to be serving God, fearing God. His wife saying, look, I, I don't, I don't want to do that now. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are. Oh. And, then, and, she's fight, and she's tussling with him, fighting with him. Fighting. And he's forcing his body upon her. Amen. And then want to quote a scripture to her. Oh, oh, oh. Go ahead, man. Good teaching. Amen. You are a rapist. Amen. That's right. Dwell with them according to knowledge. The Bible says what? Dwell with them. Get chapter and verse. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands. Ye husbands. Dwell with them. Dwell with them. According to knowledge. According to knowledge. Giving honor unto the you, wife. You raping her. You forcing your body on her ain't honor her. No. That's not honor. No. That's disrespecting her. That's right. That's right. That's right. Disrespectful. Amen. I know how hard she worked. That's right. We get these holy rollers. <laughs> she come in, got to give him the check. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Now I understand that she don't know how to spend money, and she mm -hmm. just blow it all the time. And if he got good management skills, let him manage it. That's right. <laughs> but if she got good management skills. Let her handle it. That's right. If your wife is not working and you working, brother, mm -hmm. it ain't no sin to give your wife some money. No, sir. That's right. I ain't going to be walking around with $500 in my pocket and give my wife five bucks. <laughs> no. Very cheap. Very cheap. She gonna look at me like five bucks. That's right. <laughs> My Lord. Are you listening? Go ahead, man. We took the term one flesh and abused it. That's right. We don't understand it from the perspective of the book. We get our own personal nuttiness involved. That's right. One flesh just simply means that you're no longer single. That's it. You're now in a relationship under a contract. You're married. That's right. That don't give you freedom to steal and to rape. No. And some of us actually think it can't be done to the individual we marry to. Right. You got men in jail from raping their wives. That's true. You got women in jail that done forged their husband's signatures. That's right. Because a woman is married, she ain't got no right to forge her husband's signature on something he don't know nothing about. That's true. And then say, well, we want flesh. Wait a minute. Yeah. Someone said, where is it at in the Bible? Jezebel done it. Jezebel. 
She forged the signature of her husband Ahab. That's right. And they the used the seal. The seal. Used the seal with forgery. That's right. Because she didn't have the authority to use it. That's right. The seal of the king is for the king the use. King. <laughs> you can heal a massage now. <laughs> Go ahead. Are you listening? Go ahead, man. No longer twined by one flesh. What it mean? That's right. That's right. Just simply mean you stepped in from one relationship to another. Right. Everything is hers, is mine. Everything. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hmm. Wait a minute now. Just a minute. Just a minute. My wife is a grown woman. If she were, I, I, if, I, if, I, if I wasn't married and her and I was going to get married and if she don't know how to spend her money and we ain't married, mm -hmm. I ain't going to marry her until she get that problem rectified. Mm -hmm. Why would I want to marry a woman and I got to talk to her like she's a little girl how to spend your money? That's right. She got to show me some intelligence first. Huh. She'll be crazy to marry me. Yeah. And I don't know how to spend money. That's right. Because I won't even know how to maintain a roof over her head. Right. That's right. If she and I are going to get married and she's saving her money, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at, oh, you done saved up $30,000. Well, you don't need me to save nothing because you got it covered. <laughs> That's right. You got it covered, baby. Right. Baby, baby, baby. <laughs> You got it covered. That's, That's right. the way some men think. Yeah. So they look at the bank account of the woman. And what we often teach, when you got a mind to get married, because it is a commandment for the man to work by Bible law, if you cannot, you should not go into marriage looking at her salary and yours. That's right. Because if you can't take care of her yourself, you ain't ready to get married yet. Yeah. You can't be looking at her salary and yours. Because by scriptural law, she don't have to work. She don't have to work. That's right. But we encourage a woman, don't wait for a man to do for you what you can do for yourself. Yeah. Don't wait for a man to do for you. You ain't less than a woman if you ain't got a man. That's right. Sometimes what jack you up is when you get one. That's right. Amen. Depends upon what kind you get. You can be miserable by yourself. Yeah. Some men is messed up today because they got the wrong woman. <laughs> <laughs> I always get a loud amen from that brother. <laughs> and it always come with the same force. <laughs> All right, listen to what I'm telling you. Amen. Some criticize me because we preach this. Mm -hmm. And some say, Pastor Jennings puts too much emphasis on the woman. I don't put no more emphasis than what God put. That's right. A woman have God-given rights. Yeah. And no man should want to take that right but enforce it. In fact, if she got rights and she don't know it and the man do, the man should teach it to her. That's right. Teach it to her. That's right. You want to get all you can get out of God. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Don't look and wait for the wife to carry the load. That's right. No. Mm -mm. When a woman carries the load, that's one of them rare breeds. Yeah. That's a good woman. Mm -hmm. That's that old fashioned way of thinking. Are you listening? But she ain't commanded to. That's right. Hmm? That's right. Man, you commanded to work by the sweat of your brow, and you got to take care of your wife and your youngins. Yeah. You got to make provisions for them. The woman should never have to ask the man to take care of his children. No. If you love them, you'll take care of them. That's right. Put food on the table, food in the mouth, food in the refrigerator, take care of them. That's right. They want to take care of them, you should have kept your drawers on. That's right. Huh. That's right. That's 
or whatever you had on. <laughs> That's why folks don't like me because I tell you like to your you. face. That's right. They don't like you. The angel of the Lord delivered the apostles out of prison and told them, Go in the temple that's right. and tell the people all the words of this life. And that's what we believe in doing. Amen. We'll tell you everything. Amen. When you're called and sent and made a preacher, believe me, you can't be hunting for friends. No, you can't. Because you won't find many of them. No. Are you listening? Amen. Love your wife. Take care of her. Mm -hmm. Don't grab her and beat her. Don't that's threaten her. That's right. that's right. Don't tell her you know I will. I don't know. <laughs> Then you want to go read the scripture. Read the scripture. <laughs> huh? Did you hear what the book said? Likewise, ye husbands. Game chapter and verse. First Peter chapter three and verse seven. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Well, wait a minute. That's the key. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of men don't know their wives. That's right. So you can't dwell with someone too peacefully if you don't know them. Don't know. Because you start making assumptions. Accuse him of one thing and it may be something else. Brother, in talking to your wife, don't ever compare her to another woman. Amen. I don't care what kind of track record you got by chasing women. Don't compare that wife to another woman. Woman, don't you make the mistake of comparing your husband to no man. Amen. Them are fighting words. That's right. Well, you sure ain't like uh, Peter. <laughs> Uh, what do you know about Peter? That's right. You understand? Amen. You can't make a person good if it's not in them. That's right. Old folks say you can't get blood out of a turnip. If there ain't no good, there ain't no good. Amen. That's right. The mistake that some of you make, well, I'm going to marry him and I'm going to change him. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you something, woman. You walk around here, think you're going to marry someone with the mentality, you going to change them? If you got any common sense, you want to marry someone where the change is already made. That's right. You burning yourself all out trying to change what don't want to change? That's true. Well, I'm, well, I'm not in love with them, but I'm going to marry him, and then I hope I fall in love later. Later. Something's not working right there. That's right. Nobody's home. <laughs> There's a vacancy there. Amen. I advise someone to move in. Move in. <laughs> That's right. You don't go in a marriage like that. You got a mind, you're going to change him. God got to change him. If he's already shoving you, pushing you, beating you, and you ain't married, what are you gonna marry him for? Amen. Well, Pastor Jennings, that's the way he showed his love. He ain't got good sense, and nor do you. That's right. You gonna stand back and let a man beat you half silly? Break your ribs, break your jaw. Brother, I don't care what kind of argument you and your wife have. Keep your personal business at home. That's right. You don't go trash talk your wife to brothers and trash talk your wife to sisters. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Amen. Because I, when you do that, a brother that got good sense, he ain't gonna respect you. That's right. Woman, don't trash talk your husband. Doesn't matter if you marry a giraffe, don't talk about his neck. Huh? Amen. <laughs> My job to teach everything. Oh yeah. And marriage, when you teach your children, the mother and the father should be on one accord. If you're being taught the truth of God in the same thing, you both should have the same mind Amen. toward the children. That's right. Not the mother says she can party, and the wife or and and and, and the husband says. You can't. No. One law, here, one, law. one law, and that's God's law. That's it. Hmm? That's right. One law. Amen. If I tell my sons no dating, my wife got to come along with the same thing. That's right. Not tell me I don't see nothing wrong with it. No, I don't want to hear that. I'm going to tell them like here. That's it. Go ahead, sir. 
Hmm? That's right. If I tell my daughter, no, ain't no dating. My wife ain't gonna testify to me. Well, ain't nothing wrong with it. Who told you that? <laughs> if it wasn't nothing wrong with it, then I would agree to it. That's right. But the Lord said to avoid. There's even something wrong when you look at a girl too long. That's right. That's right. That's how strict God has. Strict. God don't even want you looking at a girl too long. Too long. Mm -hmm. He said you commit the act already. Yes, Why? He know the danger and looking, and God know the danger of being alone. That's right. <laughs> Am I right, folks? Amen. Amen. It's truth. And hey, Mother Bowman just saying the song is danger. Walking in the dark. In the dark. <laughs> Both got to agree. Mm -hmm. The father is encouraging the daughter to get that education out the way. The mother shouldn't come along and say, look, it's just too much Amazon. Oh, no. No. In order for that child to go the right direction, the parents got the if, if the parents even disagree personal or issue they own mm -hmm. never drag the children into it that's right don't ever allow the children to be the victims of your disagreements never that's right don't use the children as a pawn to get back at the husband or get back at the wife amen mm -mm. nope don't let the children be your personal spy. Go ahead. Go ahead. No Gestapo tactics. David. Go ahead. You don't leave my children. Uh, I remember one of my sons, my wife got on him, and uh, I called home. He answered the phone, and he called himself. Telling on my wife, telling me. Well, at first, I, I knew something was wrong in his voice. And when I asked him, what's the matter? Oh, he was happy I asked. <laughs> <laughs> well, mama, she, she hit me and stuff. I said, what did you do? Was you wrong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you telling me for? Uh -huh. You call yourself telling on your mother? She ain't your sister. That's right. That's right. I said, boy, if you don't be quiet, I have it to beat you again. <laughs> I'm telling on, telling on the mother. That's the mother. She ain't a child. That's right. <laughs> Glory to God. Are you listening to the old man? Amen. The apostle said, I set all things in order when I come. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. This is why we preach moreover in reference to our young single people. We want to keep these stomachs flat. Huh. I'm flat. I want to keep these stomachs flat and if there's any punch, let it be from eating or as a result of you got married. That's right. Huh? That's right. If you got finished eating and you... <laughs> long as there ain't no baby in there, unless you pre unless you married. Unless you married. We're, we're hard on that. Yes, sir. Got to be there. So you young boys, don't you think about dating, and you young girls, don't you think about that. God and school, everything else is on hold. Everything. Amen. Everything. Amen. I wouldn't say, well, it's different like that under my house. God said, God, God. seek ye first, first, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And his Righteousness. There's too many young men got to drop out of school for knocking up these girls. That's right. Can't even concentrate on their books, on their learning. When you're in school, you don't have time to get serious about no girl or about no boy. Amen. You ain't got time. No, sir. Go ahead, man. No time. Go ahead. Don't leave my sons tell me the girl they want me to meet. And if my daughters tell me the boy, y'all want me. No, nah, I want to meet none of them. <laughs> I want you to meet God in books. 
<laughs> because when you're in school, all of a sudden that girl gonna be on your mind. You're gonna be able to concentrate on your on your studies. That's right. Hmm? Gonna be a distraction. Oh yeah. You're more anxious for the bell to ring so you can get on the. Hey, how you doing, girl? Hey, how you doing? You young boys, you got a mind to get married? Like we was teaching Thursday night, hmm. Friday night in Philadelphia. You young children got a mind to get married one day? You young boys, you can't be lazy. Yeah. And you young girls, are need for you to sit around waiting for a knight to come with shiny armor. Oh, that's right. There's a recession, and ain't no more knights in shiny armor. <laughs> Amen. If he got armor, he's pointing it. Yes. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Times are hard. Oh, yes. Why are we teaching like this moreover? We want this young generation in their teens not to end up being another common statistic in America. Pregnant, no husband, just another young fella who's going around making babies. That's right. Listen, young man and young woman who's married and got children. You don't want to give your children leverage to do things that you know will cause a problem. Right. Especially when you was young and you made the same dumb mistake. Amen. If I would have made the mistake and got my wife pregnant before we got married, and then after we get married, we raise a family, I ain't going to let my son do the same thing. That's right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be more happy. Listen, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. If my wife would have got pregnant before she got married, and as a single girl experienced how I would have inconvenienced her, then hey, she gonna be more. Look what her daughters when they come talk to her. Look, well, you know if this one. Oh no 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 no. Someone said, well, Pastor Jennings, you know we're living in a day now. You need to be more open minded. That's the that's the problem. Your mind and your legs is open. That's your problem. Go ahead. Your mind is open so wide, too much trash blowing out. That's right. Get your education out the way. That's what all parents should be laying that foundation to their children. That's right. You ain't got time for girlfriends and boyfriends. Get your education out the way. Some of you young girls are so emotional. Get all stressed out over the boy. You see him in the hallway of the school talking to some other girl. And you walk by, you can't take it. You got the school bag and the coach off guard. <laughs> messed up <laughs> crying that's right you crying over a boy he ain't even your husband grow up go ahead man if he don't want you handle it like a young girl he don't want you fine so be it that's right young boy girl don't want to be bothered with you take it like a young man that's right go right to your books Stay focused. Yeah. Get good grades. My son better not come talking to me. I want to come talk. He's a girl I want you to meet. And here you bringing me E's and F's. <laughs> and your E's ain't for excellent. That's right. That's right. You going to bring me eight F's. You done failed eight times over. My Lord. Uh-uh, you, you, you don't need to be talking to no girl. No. And my daughter going to my son, Daddy, look, I met this young man, I got a mind to get married, and all she got was all E's. <laughs> if you can't perform in school, wait a minute, wait a minute. Your work ethic in school, your approach to schoolwork, will carry over to your approach to the job. That's right. If you are lazy and a bum when it come to school, you gonna be a lazy bum when it come to a job. That's right. That's right. 
Hmm. My sons, they love that Camaro. Mustang. And the Charger. One of my sons, that's gonna be my first car. I say, well, that's good. You buy it. <laughs> my son Ernie played with me. He said, Daddy ain't gonna buy it. I said, what you gonna do? He said, I'm gonna touch and claim it. <laughs> <laughs> no claim religion over here. No, no. If you don't teach your children to put their priorities in order, then they're going to take it upon themselves and do it. And you know what? It's going to be a mess. That's right. It is not the job of the parent to go back and forth with the child. That's right. No. When the parent implement rule, put your foot down. Mm -hmm. And the other parent should back the other parent decision up. When Amen. that decision is right. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Go, well, Pastor Jenner, what if the children don't understand? They ain't got to. They got to obey. That's it. That's true. Written, the child won't understand on the level of a parent. They're not one. No. So right away they're going to think, oh, uh, my parent too hard, they too strict, they too the other, they too the other. So this is why some parents, some children run to another parent where they think they got more leverage. That's right. And then it makes the parents go at one another. Bump heads. Because the child wants to do one thing and that parent said, no, you ain't. And the other parent, well, I don't see nothing wrong with it, but wait a minute. If the thing is wrong, why you don't see nothing wrong with it? That's right. Children, you in school? I have to tell the children this. You can't afford to be selfish in your decisions. You know why? Your decision is going to reflect your parents. And the decisions you make will either make your parents proud of you or it will embarrass them. That's right. That's right. And any parent that got good sense is not working hard to raise an embarrassment. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Amen. It is no parent that got good sense That's right. and he's normal. That's right. That's right. I gotta put it that way. <laughs> There's a lot of abnormality. Huh? Oh, yeah. Huh? <laughs> Don't embarrass your parents. Mm -hmm. Don't embarrass yourself. If you're not pregnant, stay away from it. That's right. You young boys, don't be hugging some young girl. Trying to kiss him, and you don't even know how to lick a taffy. <laughs> Look, they're trying to do something. Trying to do something. Looking foolish. Looking foolish. That's right. Too many germs out here. That's a lot of them. See, we have a lot of children that's in their teens. And they got them jumping beans in them. Huh. We were young men in our teens, am I right? Oh, yeah. You know about the beans, don't you? Oh, yeah. You know about the beans. You've been to Jack and the Beanstalk. Them jumping beans that cause you to go to hell. That's right. You don't want your children to make the same mistake. If you end up being a father when you were 20 or 23, you don't want your child to make the same mistake. No. If you end up being a mother when you was 14, you don't want your daughter to make the same mistake. No way. No, sir. This laid back attitude of, is nothing wrong with it. You will be a grandmother and a grandfather with a bunch of unmarried children. Yes, you will. There should never be an argument. 
between a mother and a father that's baptized in the name of Jesus Christ has the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue yeah. about keeping them children in order that's right when one is telling them what the word said mm -hmm. the other should automatically that's right, that's right. I agree to it that's why right. God said it that's, that's right, right. amen Well, Pastor Jenner, you, you got to give them a chance to get exposed to it. You think like a fool. Amen. Get exposed to what? <laughs> no, you can't hover over your children 24 hours a day, which is true. But what you can prevent. That's right. If you got sense, you will put your shoulder to the wheel and do it. Amen. Young sisters may go out with their friends and go to the bowling alley and whatnot. Fine. You go to the bowling alley and then you may want to go to a ball game. Well, call your parents. That's right. That's right. Because they got the right to come by the bowling alley and look for you right there. That's right. With the ball in your hand. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> huh? That's right. I come by the bowling alley looking for my daughter or for my son and you had a ball game I got the right to get worked up yes, yeah. and drive you out the game why you didn't respect me or your mother enough to call that's right you can't say well, all my other friends went they're not my kids yeah, that's right. yeah. we teach our children all in the body of Christ respect your parents yeah. you don't have the right to take it upon yourself and make decisions without consulting your parents. That's right. That's right. You under that roof, you must consult your parents. You just can't take off and leave the house. No. No way. And assume your parents won't mind. Mm -hmm. Then when your parents take your picture. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's what she look like. That's right. One parent teaching the child respect and another parent teaching the child disrespect. Uh-uh. Yeah. That's a house divided against itself. Yeah. Stand. Won't stand. stand. This is old-fashioned teaching. Oh, yeah. We was teaching this stuff in the basement before I met practically all of you. Amen. I was teaching it before I got married. Yeah. My wife was following me before we was married. And we taught the same thing before we got married. Amen. And we helped the same thing after we got married. Yeah. God's law Good. first. There's too many single young girls pregnant. Amen. Young boys can't even get their water straight in the bathroom. You may run up on a young, experienced girl and put something on you, back y'all up against the wall. That's true. Then what? <laughs> the job of the parents is to govern the curiosity of the child by teaching him and her how to deal with it and how to be disciplined with it and how to handle it. That's right. I don't find, I, I, why would I feel proud? My daughter come to me. I got a boyfriend. I want to know what you're doing with one. Amen. You got your first boyfriend. I ain't got nothing to be proud about. For what? Yeah. Right, right. Uh-uh. There's no need for you young people to get serious about no one and you ain't ready to marry. You know why? You don't want to look like an unstable girl jumping from boy to boy to boy. You know how ugly that look? Amen. You don't want to like no unstable young man jumping from girl to girl to girl like you's a male hoe. Go ahead. Talk to me. Go ahead. Only anybody got a problem with this teaching, something's right. wrong with you. That's right. And you's a parent? That's right. Hmm. Are you listening? Amen. That's why we've been telling the children are over. Don't think about no boys and girls. Focus on God and marriage. If you seek God first, then let God bless you with a God wife or a husband. Let the Lord do it. He'll do it. That's right. 
Moreover, these young boys getting girls pregnant. And then they ain't even with the girl that got pregnant. That's right. Then they get together with another girl, she get pregnant. Leave her. Get another girl, get pregnant. No, man, we ain't having this trash in church. Go ahead. Go ahead. We're not going to stand for it, and I don't care who don't like it. Go ahead. If you offended by it, you shouldn't be a member of First Church. Amen. Amen. All this single pregnancy in America is a disgrace. Preachers ain't saying nothing. You got folks following me upset with this kind of teaching. I'm teaching morals. That's right. I'm just teaching morals. That's right. Common sense morals. Yeah. So what's wrong with these young boys having a boyfriend and a girlfriend? Look at what you did when you had it. <laughs> Do you need me to say anything? Look at what you did when you had it. Go ahead. If you don't teach your children right, someone in the street going to do it. Yes, they but will. they ain't going to teach them what you want them to know. That's right. We're trying to teach you how to protect your children. And to do that, you got to develop their mind. That's right. We don't want our young girls a bunch of boys. I don't, I don't want my daughter to bring no one home for me to meet, bring no one to the church just for me to meet them. Right. No. You 18, don't bring me nobody here to meet. Amen. If you want to invite them, fine. But to meet, uh, well, daddy, did. I'm going to look at how you're talking to me. Well, dad, you know. I see my daughter, Sierra, do you, you know. Now, if she say, well, dad, look, this is James and whatnot. I invite him to church. Oh, all right, I'm going to talk. How right, you know, you know. But when she start, daddy, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, daddy, this is James. I'm gonna be like, what's wrong with you? Do you understand? Why? All right, I don't want to get serious with James. Suppose you meet Paul. That's right. Then meet Johnny. Then meet Jesse James. Oh! When you start that hypergrass behavior, <laughs> I'm telling you, that's a dangerous, dangerous thing. I don't want it from the young girls. I don't want it from the young men. Amen. So we're teaching you stability and how to be focused. God and get them grades right and know how the beers look like we've been teaching you young fellas with age. Increase of age come increase of responsibility. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Like I told my sons, Ernie, Jordan, and Rez, Malcolm is the youngest one among y'all. So whatever y'all say and do, you got to be careful in front of him. That's right. Because he's going to say it and do it. That's right. Thinking it's all right. That's right. Hmm? Hmm. So you got to be careful what you say and what you do. Oh, yes. That's true. Oh, yes. It says Holy Ghost teaching. Oh, yeah. My young brothers and young sisters, time for you to get your mind on God. And it's also time for you to let's buckle down in your school, whether you're in college or high school or middle school or elementary school. Let me tell you young children something. Society talk about American dream. It's an American nightmare. You don't want to be growing up and then become content with any old job right. where you can't even barely take care of yourself. That's right. You don't want to be a person that's satisfied with 
just getting by, want something out of life. Wait, man. It's good teaching. And labor to contribute something in life. Are you listening? That's right. Don't be afraid to work. You too young to talk about, I don't want to work at McDonald's. If McDonald's hire you, flip the burger. Amen. Become one with the burger. <laughs> Be able to quote what's on the map. Special sauce. That's right. Lettuce, tomatoes, and cheese on a sesame seed bun. Memorize it. Memorize it. Get it in you. That's right. And then think bigger. That's right. Think bigger than the grill. That's it, brother. What do you mean, think bigger? Think of owning your own business. That's right. Don't just talk about it. Make a reality. See, you got to be ambitious. That's right. If you're mentally lazy, mentally sluggish, Listen, when I was coming up, when we was out of school on summer break, we wasn't even allowed to sleep all day. My father didn't care it was a summer break. Amen. You had to still get up like it was school. That's right. You can't lay around to one, two, and three. And then tell me, well, I want to go. It's one book and one law. I want all of our children to be successful. All of them. Amen. All of them. Some of the children may grow up and marry one another in the church. That's true. Sure. Hmm. Yeah, you grow up and may got a mind to marry someone in the church later on. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if one of them end up marrying my sons. You still, as a father, grill my son. That's right. Well, I was one of Pastor Jennings' sons, so, you know, I ain't got to talk to him. Why not? Talk to him. Don't accept it. Talk to him. Don't go soft on him. That's right. You let your sons might want to marry my daughter. I'm going to grill him. I ain't going to grill him across from Pastor Jennings. Because I'm looking out for the well-being of my daughter. And I want to know what's in his mind and in his heart. That's right. And if he's still in school, I'm going to tell him, no, you ain't, no, don't get married. Don't get married and you're in school. Yeah. Finish school first. Because school going to be enough pressure. Yes, it will be. And there's no need to bring that pressure in your house. That's right. Is that right? Oh, yeah. It's tough. Are you listening? Brother, if you get married, if you got real bad debt, <laughs> hey? <laughs> or sister, if you got, some of you laughing, but I'm telling you, this is real life. Yes, it is. If brother or sister got real bad debt, wisdom will tell you straighten your debt out first. That way, if you get married, you're not putting yourself in a hole because all your money is starting off going to the debt. That's right. That's right. You go right into marriage trying to dig yourself out of a hole? Be, don't have no hole. That's true. Clean it up first. It's good teaching, man. Now, who would get upset with me? But yeah. someone who ain't got good sense. Yeah. This is common sense teaching. Old-fashioned, common-sense teaching. Are you listening? Go ahead, man. No, if I'm in debt, and my wife saved 30 or 40,000, I ain't gonna borrow a dime from her mm -hmm. to get me out of the debt that I got myself in. Right. I ain't doing it. That wouldn't be fair to her. That's right. No, no. Yeah, she may love me. Well, here. I'll come back again. Need it again. Here. Need it again. Here. Until I ain't got to say need it again. She already, the moment she see me. Here. 
No. Do you know what's going to happen? She ain't going she going to end up in a predicament that I'm trying to get out of. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now do you understand? That's right. Solomon says, "Wisdom excelleth folly as light doeth darkness." Then he says, "God set an end to darkness." That's true. This is why we're hard on you about getting your education. You want to get your education under your belt. That way, uh, I remember we had the woman discussion in Newport News. That's one statement that Adam Clayton Powell made. Well, it's Troy Adam, but I always call him Adam Clayton Powell. And he was talking about how it's important for a young man to get education. Listen, young brother, there's no harm in going back to school. No. Sister, there's no harm in going back to school. If you're able to do it, shoot for it. But you're going to need the education under your belt to be able to maintain self and a family. Oh, yeah. My young brothers and young sisters, if you have an I don't care attitude about education, you ain't going to want to work. No, you won't. Hmm? Mm -hmm. It's like some young children, they start getting in their teens, they get to the point, I, 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 don't want, I don't want to be told. I'm mean, tired of being told what to do. Well, that means you don't never want to be nothing in life. In every stage of life, someone is telling you something. Tell you what to do. You work for a company, somebody going to tell you what to do. Oh, yeah. And what you going to do? Walk off the job because you don't want the ball? I don't want them to tell me what to do. You're fired. That's right. I'm going to get another job. Somebody there going to tell you what to do. Tell you what to do. So when you're home, home is dress rehearsal for being told what to do. And if you're stubborn with your mother, stubborn with your father, you're going to be stubborn on the job. Yeah. If you're lazy at home with your mother, lazy with your father, you're going to be lazy on the job. That's right. You get at a certain age, you can't wait for mom to wake you up, mm -hmm. daddy to wake you up. Got to get up. Go to work. That's right. Oh, yeah. Excellent. You think mother and father for that work? Mm -mm. Imagine if parents did what children do. Just, just don't do nothing. <laughs> children want to look like they're from a concentration camp. That's right. Face all sunk in looking. Right. All jacked up. Jacked up. You children, you think your parents feel like working? <clears throat> Do you think that? See, now as a young child, you're anxious to go to work. <laughs> when that first week before it ends, you're going to be like, man. That's real. See, when you got children, the parents got to make that money stretch. Oh, yeah. See, you ain't got no job, so you ain't think about that. No, sir. That's right. But when you get a job and get on your own and have your own apartment, see, some of you think you got it all planned. Well, I'm going to make my money stretch because I ain't going to buy this and I ain't going to buy that. You ain't got to. That's right. Huh? You can just have a box in your apartment. <laughs> a box is your table. That's it. That's it. But the moment them bills come there, Automatically, you gotta make that stuff stretch. Yeah. You can be like, where did this bill come from? How that bill get? I'm telling you right now. That's right. So if you think you got it all worked out, no, you ain't. No, you don't. Life is a lesson. That's right. The learning process. My father worked three jobs. Them old timers worked two and three jobs. That's right. Taking care of a family. I had a perfect example of what a father was. An excellent example of what a father was, what a real man was. Mm -hmm. Laziness to him was, was like an antichrist. <laughs> it was like blasphemy. When we was told to do something, we, were for, we wasn't even allowed to walk slow. I wasn't allowed to walk slow, I had chores. My father, my father ain't wanted to hear. Uh, I was, I, my job, I had to take out the trash. Mm -hmm. And there were times I didn't want to do it. So what I did was try to be slick. I knew what time he came home, so I went to bed early. You know, I went to bed early. 
you know, act like I was snoring when he came in. And you could hear his keys jingling. He come walk up the step. I know he done checked the kitchen. I know he did. And he had checked the bathrooms. You see the trash in the cans in there? Bags in the kitchen? Where's Jean? <laughs> Nigga! My mother be like, oh, he's in bed. Like, okay. <laughs> I hear him coming up the step. I do that extra snore. <laughs> Father ain't no fool who came in that room. You ain't sleep, boy. Get up. He didn't care if it was dark outside. Mm -hmm. I had to get up and empty that trash and take it out. You know why? He knew anytime he worked, That's right, sir. he deserved to be obeyed. That's right. Let me tell you something, children. You ain't doing no favors for your parents by obeying them. No. You doing yourself one. That's right. That's right. Give me Ecclesiasticus. Mm -hmm. Let me get that quick mm -hmm. about the father and the mother mm -hmm. and the curse that a child can bring on themselves. In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 3 and verse 16. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 3. Chapter 3. Verse 16. Verse 16. He that forsaketh his father. He that forsaketh his father. Is as a blasphemy. Is equivalent to a blasphemer. And he that angereth his mother. He that provoke his mother. Is cursed of God. You will be cursed from God. That's right. That's right. You see why we are teaching this? Right. Amen. Amen. Mm. Hmm? If I die and my wife is left behind with the kids, they don't, my boys don't become the man of the house. Mm -hmm. She's the head. That's right. As long as she lives, they are her children. That's right. As they get older, they get jobs, they work, give your mother some money. Even if I'm living, and I will be living when you start working, <laughs> give your mother some money. Even if your first check is $10, That's right. give your mama some money. Don't stand there. It's only $10. I'm going to have for myself. Put your lip in. Put it in. Your mama deserved the whole check. <laughs> this is old fashioned teaching. That's right. Check. Give us some money. I don't want none. Give me none of your money. I don't want it. But give your mother some money. That's right. Hmm? Get a check for $20, $25. Give your mother some money. Always remember that. That's right. You owe your parents everything. everything. You will never know the sweat and tears and hard work they put into you. Food in your mouth, clothes in your back. That's right. No, the, the parent don't deserve no form of disrespect or back talk. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. That's why the parents got to be on one accord when it comes to a child. That way the child can never throw in the other parent say, Well, mama said. Yeah. Well, daddy said, wait, 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 wait a minute. The parents supposed to already be on one accord. So when one make a reference to the other, it's the same thing that the other already said. That's right. One law. <laughs> Get personal views and feelings out of it. One law. Amen. Let the law of God govern your house. Amen. Respect the law. Amen. Some folk think I'm trying to run your house. I got my own to run. That's right. I'm going to tell you what the word of God said. If you don't want to govern by it, then that's between you and God. I'm not coming back for you, but the Lord is. Lord but while I'm alive, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. I'm charged to do it. Right. Glory right. to God and Paul said, this will I do right. if God permit. Amen. I'm trying to save our young people. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to congregate. You see all these men we got? Mm. These young kids going to become grown men. Yeah. Right. Right. Thank 
think of it. Your son one day going to be a grown man. That's right. The baby you holding. And you pick him with a slobber. Giggy, giggy, giggy. Giggy, That's one day she going to be start developing and fear going to get in you. That's right. When she start developing, before she used to walk around. Then she come in. You can be like, oh my God, I birthed that. Oh, oh, oh Lord, mm, Jesus, oh Lord, mm. That's right. Pray, you praying and you ain't even seen a boy yet. Is that right? That's right. Oh yeah. A lot of us have a lot to learn about parenting. Yeah. And the problem with many of us, we're so arrogant and self-centered, ain't no one can tell us nothing. Because we think we know everything. See? Pastor Jenna ain't trying to hurt no one. I'm just trying to tell you. That's right. Oh, yes, I am. It's my job to tell you. My job, as I was teaching Thursday night, is beyond this pulpit. Right. I'm just not confined up here. We deal with you up here. We deal with you one on one on the side of the church. We deal with you one on one in the office. Why? That's my job. That's right. That's shepherding. It's beyond the pulpit. It's bigger than the pulpit. Oh, yeah. That's why we deal with husbands and wives and children. One on one. Why? It's my God given job. That's right. Hmm? A lot of children don't want their parents to bring them to me. That's right. Oh, yeah. There's so many parents across the country. Even when I go overseas, they bring the children to me, talk to me, counsel me. Pastor Jennings, I'm having this. One parent came to me and thanked me. She was crying. Her son was about to commit suicide. This was overseas, we never told you. And I met the boy for the first time. Talked to him. He felt as though he just couldn't handle life pressures. And I was teaching him what life offer and pressures inseparable from it. And the mother came and talked to me on the next trip. I went overseas, I believe it was India. And I had an interpreter. And the brother was there, she just want to say, and she was like, <laughs> you know, in India, they got a thing where they shake their head. He said, oh, and she just want to say that her son made a full change. <laughs> And as a result of you talking to him, he no longer want to die. Wonderful. Anytime, if you're sick, you take a child to the doctor. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So what's wrong with anyone bringing their children to Pastor Jennings? I'm your leader. God have given me some good insight. Oh, yeah. And believe it or not, it works. Yes, it does. Sometimes I can see what a parent can't see. That's right. It doesn't take nothing from the parent. There's no sin of needing help. But never be too proud that you can't ask for it. Because life may create a circumstances where you didn't ask for it. And now a problem has created because you didn't ask for it and the problem was avoidable. Amen. Arrogance is the downfall of a man. The downfall of a woman. Anybody. Your children is the future of the church. So how should we teach them? It is our obligation and our divine duty to teach them right. That's right. I can't hover over my children 24 hours a day. I don't put them above yours. I look at my children as I look at yours. I pray God my children don't embarrass me. I pray God that your children don't embarrass you because if they embarrass you, they have embarrassed me. Certainly. Right. When any one child in the church embarrassed their parents, they have embarrassed the church. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you again. 
where anybody child embarrassed their parents in the church, you have embarrassed the church. That's right. That's right, sir. Yes, you have. Right. You think this is just confined to your house. It's not. It's the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. When you embarrass your parents, you embarrass the body of Christ. And you embarrass God. Yes. And God even told you. He said you have crucified the Lord afresh and bring him to an open shame. That's right. That mean your conduct embarrass your creator. I keep telling people this is bigger than what folks think. Yeah. I have to tell you all the words of this life. And in doing such, I will create enemies. That's true. But it's not an enemy that I can't get a hold to. <laughs> life will humble you. And you will thank God for me. <laughs> you will. That's right. To so you parents, that's laboring really to be on top of things. Let me say to your children, children, if you got brothers or sisters that went out of left field, don't follow them. If you got brothers or sisters that went out and made babies, don't you repeat it. That's right. Don't look down on them. No. And don't think you better than them because you didn't make that mistake. No. That's right. Just do not go down the same road and do the same thing. Amen. Learn from their mistake. Learn from them. I mean, some of my brothers had babies before they got married. I didn't look down on them. Mm -hmm. But not by any means was I going to do the same thing. Right. Why? I simply didn't want to do it. Right. Just that simple. I didn't want to do it, and I refused to do it. <laughs> sure, just that simple. Wasn't no one pressuring me to make him a baby. My wife wasn't trying to get her to have a baby. We wasn't married. She made up in her mind she wasn't having none. My mind made up, I ain't giving none. <laughs> Just that simple. Yet, some of my brothers had babies. Long before they was married. They didn't inspire me. <laughs> That's right. I was not inspired to say, oh, golly gee, I think I'm gonna follow that road. Nope. What, what am I telling you? Was I better than them? No. I was a thinker. That's right. Just that simple. I was a thinker. Because something looked good or may not look difficult, that don't mean it is a difficult. That's right. That's true. That's true. When you make or have a baby, your life has been altered. Amen. And the young single people that do have babies, they can bear witness. It's a they like a mind-blowing experience. Oh, yeah. yeah, Jack. You know, that girl may call you two o'clock in the morning. I need, I need you to go buy some milk. Uh, wait, but I can't go to work. I ain't going to work. Uh, I, I need some milk. You can't come to me. Man, daddy, this crazy girl calling me two o'clock in the morning. My son, you need some milk. Man, get your butt out the house and go get that milk. That's right. Amen. Well, they ain't take a bath. Go scratching. <laughs> Go scratching. <laughs> you didn't want to take care of it, you should have kept your fruity balloons on. Nevermore. This is all reality. Yes, it is. Father is a occupation. Yes, it is. You think you're a father because you got a baby? Anybody can leave a woman, have a child, but father is an occupation. That means you're a teacher, a disciplinarian, a guide, one that knows how to present lesson. It's more than throwing a ball to your child. I'm being a father here, kid. It's more than throwing your child up and forget it's up there. More than giving your child an alliance, an, al an, an, an allowance? Oh, yeah. No. You must help develop the mind of the child. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
And that comes through teaching. What do you mean teaching? I ain't sitting with my boys talking to them about the Bible 24 hours a day. Right. Son, remember Paul. <laughs> Son, remember James. No. I'm going to tell them about life and what life consists of. Oh, yeah. I'm going to keep the relationship with kids open enough where they can talk to me about boys and can talk to me about girls. That way they can hear me say, no. That's right. Hey? That's true. No, it isn't that they can't talk to me about boys and can't talk to me about girls. They can. Why? You need it. You need it. But it is my place to listen at the conversation, then implement the necessary rule. Mm -hmm. Even if they say, well, Dad, I, I looked at it. Yeah, yeah. Been there, done that. Did it with my father. Shoot, after I met Dottie, after I saw her jumping rope with shorts on, that was enough. <laughs> And then I got a chance to talk to him and whatnot, and the more we converse. And then as time went by, I remember I asked my pop. <laughs> he was sitting in the living room, and my mom just sitting there like an instigator. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I said, so pop, you know, I mean, can I give her a kiss good night? <laughs> my father said, no, boy. <laughs> Is that what you want to kiss her for? <laughs> I'm like, I looked at him, I said, hey, what do you mean what I want to kiss her for? He said, if you start kissing her, you're going to start wanting to do other things. <laughs> he looked at me and said, how you think all 80 of y'all got here? <laughs> hmm? That's right. He said, no, don't, don't start that kiss. No, don't start it. I said, what about hugging her? He said, are you in church doing it? I said, no, I ain't somebody in church. He said, then don't go doing it. <laughs> he said, if you can start hugging and start kissing before you know you can get so close. He said, I'm telling you, he, he told me straight up. I am not accepting a child from you. Mm. Told me to my face. He said, I ain't accepting a child from you. Mm. He ain't pointing out nobody else. <laughs> But he told, he said, I am not accepting. And what was he telling me? You ain't got no excuse if you end up like a fool. Right. So I respect it. Yeah, I didn't want no baby. Someone said, man, you didn't find your wife tempting. I ain't no fag. Of course I did. That's right. <laughs> not the world I'm going to walk around all that and not find a tempting. Huh? <laughs> what are you talking? No! Of course you're going to find it tempting. That's where discipline coming at. Yeah. I simply refused to be a daddy and I wasn't married. Just that simple. I didn't want it. My father told me the complications that would be involved. He said, boy, you get a job? All, practically all your money is going in the mouth of that child. He said, I'm telling you right now, practically all your money, as soon as you work, it's going to be gone. Yep. And I wasn't ready for my money to be gone. <laughs> I wasn't ready for it. I don't look down on anyone that got pregnant out of marriage. But by God's law, I must reprimand the deed. That's right and encourage our children not to go that direction. That's right. If any parents in here is offended by it, you need to learn to be a parent. Amen. You need to learn to be one. Amen. What man in his right mind want his daughters pregnant and they ain't married? That's right. That's right. What respectable man so think of it from that perspective, young boys. Don't bother some girl and get another man's child pregnant yeah. and carry that whole house through all that trauma. That's right. You carry that entire house. If she come out of a, a decent home, right. the whole house gonna be upside down. Mother gonna be spending nightmares crying. 
frustrated. Father go, father gonna want to kill you. That's right. Now I'm talking to you what a father, the way a real father gonna think. He gonna wanna find you and kill you. Where he at? Where is he at? Where's my gun? He looking for a gun and ain't got none. He gonna want to kill you. That's true. Why? Because father know that the young boys today is knocking up girls and disappearing like the phantom. Yes, That's right. It doesn't make no sense when I see 15 year old girls with five kids and you 15. Oh my God. Did you ever close your legs? Mm. And these boys will do it. You know, it's just really no thing. No thing. So what your father won't tell you, or your mother may not, Pastor Jennings will. That's right. If there's any parent don't like it, that's your problem. But I got a commandment to keep, and I'm going to keep it until I die. Amen. It's 2011. This is the year that your children get another age. My oldest daughter will be 21. My next daughter will be 19. My third daughter will be 14. Malcolm will be 12. Oldest son will be 18 this year. My next oldest son will be 17. The next one will be 15. I don't want to stand these parents that got a problem with this old fashioned Teaching. Right. I don't want my boys to be a single parent. I don't want my girls to be a single parent. That's right. So we're going to keep the teaching in the old fashioned manner. No babies until you're married. That's right. That's, that's simple. So my young boys in the church who think about girlfriends, think about algebra, geometry, history, work on y'all report cards, all of you. That's right. And you young sisters, the same thing. Because you getting older. And let me, let me tell you point blank. This old stuff you watch on television that life is ice cream cake and dandy, you's a sucker to believe it. Amen. Life is harsh and life is real. Amen. And the reason why we teaching you hard and straight up, because you're not gonna be under your parents' roof all your life. That's right. You're gonna have to get on your own. And to survive on your own tomorrow, you gotta be a good listener. Amen. Today. That's right. Or when you get out there, you just gonna die. What is life? An obstacle course. Go ahead, man. Survival. Yeah. It's harsh. So harsh until you can go to college four years and what you went for, they don't even need that no more in life. That's true. That's true. Now you gotta try to figure, oh God, now you gotta go back again. Many of you have experienced that before? Jobs that people used to frown on years ago, they trying to get. Yeah. Now they're hard to get. Good example. A lot of men had too much pride to be a trash man until they found out what they was making. <laughs> That's right. See? That's right. Now it's like, you know, can I be a trash man? <laughs> See, times are so hard until people are getting jobs to have better benefits and paying less. That's true. Why? They need that coverage for them children. Yeah. They getting jobs that's paying less and better benefit. Let me tell you children something. You better appreciate the hard work your parents are putting into your existence. Amen. Why you have them. You don't need to have a parent die. Oh yeah, I didn't realize how much they meant. Why not? You mean to tell me you under the roof of your parents and you ain't got sense enough to realize what they mean, how vibrant they are until they're dead? Yeah. Then ask yourself, how much observing of your parents did you do? That's right. My father been dead this year, 20 years. 20 years. 
It don't take me 20 years after his death to realize what role he played in my life. That's right. I understood it before God snatched his breath away. If my sons and daughters not going to realize what a value their mother and I am to them until after we dead, that's an insult to our living. That's right. Are you listening? Yes, this teaching mold and make the parent. Amen. It helps them that's not a parent yet how to be one. And it helps them that are how to be better. That's right. Someone say, well, my parents didn't do it that way. I'm talking do it this way. Here. Amen. It is written, get rid of your mortal mind. That's right. Get rid of your way. Let's go here. Talk to your children about what they want to be. And then look at their grades and see can they be it. That's right. That's true. I'm telling you the truth. That's true. My oldest son wants to be a, a robotic engineer. He got to, he, them grades come in, got to, got to, he got to have them grades at a level where in, because colleges look at your performance from high school. Do you young people know that? That's right. The colleges ain't waiting for you to get there. They gonna look at your performance in high school before you get in. So yeah, we want to push our children to have high goals. High goals. That's right. Sure. That's right. If your child tell you, I want to be a doctor, don't tell them, no, you're ridiculous. Encourage them. That's right. Because your mind is trivial. Don't put it on them. Amen. This is a problem. Children have big aspirations. Daddy, I want to be a judge. Right. Awesome. You can't be a judge. Why? That's true, man. Why? Why can't he? You got a whole book of judges. That's right. That's true. Daughter come, daddy, I want to, mama, I want to be a doctor. Don't be realistic. What's wrong with it? Why you got to kill a child's dream? Go ahead, man. We're trying to, I am encouraging you to dream. But I'm also encouraging you to have the mental capacity to make your dream a reality. In the midst of such, you're going to have some back sets. That's right. It ain't going to be all smooth sailing to accomplish your goal. No way. This is why we're hammering on spiritual and emotional and mental stability. So when you have those back sets, you can handle it without falling apart. That's right. Amen. It's a part of life. An obstacle course is a part of life. That's good teaching. You have throwbacks. You may cry. Don't get all, all, all work, all out of shit. No, no, no. You have to use crying. Shut it down. That's right. Regroup. That's right. Let's see what kind of another approach we can take. That's right. To do what? Get the thing accomplished. That's old school attitude. Amen. Hmm. Parents that had to quit schools and work in the cotton fields. When I say quit school, I don't mean they quit college. No. They didn't quit high school. And most of them did not quit middle school because they never got there. Had to quit fourth grade, fifth grade to work on a plantation. That's true. Picking cotton from sun up to sun down, crop and tobacco. That's right. They didn't have no vacation. No vacation. It wasn't no raise because you ain't get paid nothing. That's right. Mm. When I say pick cotton, it wasn't soft like you buy it in the store. It was a hard life. Are you listening? Go ahead, brother. If you young men and young girls gonna be lazy. See, a child that wants to do and may not and may have trouble doing, he or she get frustrated, which is a good sign. You know why it's a good sign? It shows you they want to accomplish it. That's right. But a child who's failing, and they, you know, it don't phase him or her. I stop. They 
dangerous sign. Dangerous. Because if you don't care about yourself, how you want somebody else to care for you? Listen, you have to, I know things don't work in all this, but my time, I'm getting out of here soon. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> you know, all of our children, you're going from elementary school to middle school to high school. And some of the things that your parents are telling you, you can find when you get older, you will be saying it to your friends. You can be like, oh God, I sound like my mother. <laughs> oh, I sound like my father. You young kids, you ain't gonna be kids forever, right here, you ain't. No. Always, you're not. And if you scared to grow up, you might as well face the fact. Until you find some magic water that's gonna keep you at the age you are, <laughs> your numbers gonna keep rolling. Keep rolling. You're not, my, I, like I tell my sons, you're not going to be 20, 25, and 30, and I'm still getting you out of bed. That's right. Get up and go to work. Mom, what you got to keep? Because when you get a certain age, you got to earn your keep at home. Oh, yeah. Is that right, Bobby? Yes, sir. See, this is what a lot of young parents don't know. When you get a certain age, you gotta earn your keep. That's right. This is why I've been hammering on the importance of giving your children chores. And let me tell you children something. Your parents got the right to come home and find everything done that they ask. And you ain't got the right to look for rewards for doing it. Amen. Amen. You got your reward. You got a roof over your head, clothes on your back, food in your mouth. That's right. You got your reward. <laughs> That's old school teaching. Who would have a problem with this but a young modern fool? Modern. That's true. Thank you for listening, brothers and sisters. This is good enough for, I mean, this is good enough for every drop to get over the air. All of it. We are, we, are, we are in a crisis. And we don't want to lose our young kids to the streets. So as parents, we got to get our heads together and look out for the best interest of the child. Not the child lay rules to the parents, but for the parents to lay rules that will help the child develop and mature to a positive young man and a positive young girl. We're, you give me the correct time, brother. Ten minutes to five. Ten, what? <laughs> Ten minutes to what? Five. My God, I was long preaching like Paul. <laughs> time went quick. <laughs>